This is not a reaction. This is just kind of me going through the trailer. Uh, I'm not going to even get fanfare. Here we go. Uh, I wanted to look for stuff because people... I, the first day at a new I specifically saw people saying some stuff was here that I didn't see. Like, oh, Scrap Trap's in there. I'm like, Scrap Trap was in this? Can be daunting, anxiety inducing, and downright terrifying. Fazbear Entertainment is different. We are invested in you. At a Fazbear location, you are given the... Interesting that this is called Fazer Blast and it's the FNAF 1 office with like targets on the door lights. Opportunity to find your lane. And then we have Captain Foxy again. What interests you? And then this is the nacho stand in the actual Pizza Plex. Oh, Customer service. Technical support. This is the mini game I actually played. Uh, I was at the PAX demo of Help One 2. This is the mini game I played, and this is a really good one in my opinion. Like this one was really fun, really spooky. Oh, did they add guides for it? That I, I heard multiple people leaving this booth complain that the, the one problem is this final part with the circuit board. It is way more convoluted, not convoluted, it's, it's way more complicated and tricky than the other ones are. Uh, and, and the game does not choreograph it as well as it should, really. Uh, and uh, if they've updated that, that's nice. Safety and security. <laughs> Gassing Game healthy. And then we got the VR uh, endoskeleton in the daycare, weirdly enough. So, who is this guy in the center here? Is he just like one of the props? Because that's like definitely a pair of eyes, and I think. I think it's supposed to be just a, a prop because like you can see when the, the thing goes down it's silhouettes there still so that's like some physical thing but I'm not sure what I'm looking at here is there uh this is er... oh that costs money okay I, I don't know what I'm really looking at here Driving one of our ride attractions. Maybe. and we're making cookies here it looks like or uh, this is med uh, medicine then we have our cracked uh, Roxy, which is here, which I mean, I wonder if the implication that they're doing with this mini game is that because this was a question people had in uh, normal scare bridges why do they end up so like decayed and like messed up? Uh, it could just be that this is implying they just put a fresh coat of paint and makeup over the characters, uh, and that they're always this cracked and messed up deep down. It's just covered by, like, this paint and stuff to make them look new without having to get full new casing every time. Hammer and fashion with service to the stars. Try a little of everything. And then we're building paper plate pals, which is ridiculous. And uh, Bonkabon was another one of the mini games people could play. And then... We have Helpy foaming at a mouth. I'm assuming this is supposed to be, like... An ER training kind of like, oh, first response, help med kit a kid. And we're just using help you as a test dummy, but. <laughs> this is a great, like, I love this one where, so basically what's going on is as you repair this carousel more and more, more of the things are spinning around and he's perched on one of the things and he's, as he moves towards you. So he'll like hop from one to one to one as he gets close to you. And you have to flash his light on him to get him to go back to the further rings. Uh, while repairing like the circuit board. And it's really intense. You got the toy animatronics all around with like Mangle. There's also normal Foxy around there. Uh, what is this one though? It says round. So that one's definitely a game. And then, th then we have just straight up FNAF 1 mixed with 6 here. Like this is... Mm. Or, or no, this is actually. Uh, is this sister locations ver like version of the room? Yeah, this is sister locations boss room. It's just like a funky version of it. Uh, and then we have. This is the VR mini game again, but it seems like we're gonna be stopping endos from attacking us while we're playing match cards with the VR endo. 
then we have this seems to be more of custom nights which i think is just going to be basically a normal fnaf challenge in this uh where we have to stop the characters in real time and then this is something Daco showed off in his demo which is uh the it's the updated version of the breaker room mini game where you have to like pull levers kind of frankenstein like to get the power going at the same time and some of them require multiple and some of them don't and then you have to actually get the megaphone out and point it at freddy to get him to go away and then this is the carousel mini game again then there's this which i uh this seems to be new i don't know what this is for and then here, this one's the funkiest, because I'm like, what the fuck is this? I'm assuming this is like a shooting gallery version of FNAF 1. Uh, it's not the Curse of Dreadbear version of FNAF 1, because the doors aren't boarded up. Because uh, that's when I was like, I was thinking, oh, maybe it's the FNAF, because, you know, in uh, Curse of Dreadbear's DLC, you had the remake of FNAF 1 with the, the Jackos attacking you. Uh... But it's not. It's the f this is the FNAF One office, but like modified. It looks like actually kind of like a cardboard cutout. Actually, you can see it's flat in in the shape of a cart like of the office, and you can see there's just distance and a gap behind it. So this is actually not the real office. We're just like passing by it in a theater or caravan. Like I could see this being a caravan that moves from set to set uh, that you're looking out of, or I could see this being a theater with this change stuff that, that uh so it seems like we're gonna be dealing with uh the plush babies while playing with the shooting gallery and then we have what looks like an updated version of the repair areas before the glam rocks which i think is what uh roxy's probably was for roxy you probably need makeup for her and then for glam rock freddy you're probably repairing him my question is hmm let me look this up before i open up a, a tab or a browser for this I want to look at Glamrock Freddy here. Before I make a claim. No, this does match. Never mind. Uh, yeah, I, I don't see any discrepancies between this and Glamrock Freddy. I was wondering if this could be a prototype situation. Where this is actually prototype Freddy we're messing with. Uh... Because other than the eyes, which are the obvious difference, which I'm assuming is because we're repairing him and messing with him. I, I, I don't assume that's what he's supposed to look like. But all of his model looks spot on. Like, you can even see, like, the red chain. The, it's a little more pronounced because we're in VR, it looks like. But, like, the, the face paint's there. Uh, yeah, no, that's spot on. I can't find, like, a render of him Th that this isn't accurate to. Uh, see, does this reveal anything? No, he even has the normal uh, armbands. So, th yeah, this is not Prototype Freddy if they are separate characters. I mean, I guess it technically would be Prototype Freddy if they are the same character, but whatever. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, th this is not the Prototype model that was in Ruin because you can see the normal spikes. Or the normal bumps that are not spikes, because uh, Prototype has spikes there. What was this shot? Oops, I thought you did it. Okay, that's the transition to the... Or is this the... Is this an opening version of the ride? Like, I think we're on a ride because we're moving here. And this is a VR game, so movement... So the player moving is not normal unless it's going to be a ride. God, what the fuck is this, man? Okay. Oh, okay. So this is the helpy section that just happens to involve Scrap Baby. So it looks like we're repairing helpy in a kind of modified version of the... Uh kind of modified version of the FNAF 6 office, but not really. Like, it, it does have the huge vent concept. But the monitor's a little different. There's extra stuff here. There's curtains, which were definitely not there. It's an overall larger space. Um, 
Seems like we'll have to use it. Okay, so it looks like the ad appeared, so our player's grabbing the remote to turn it off. And then it seems like while we're dealing with Scrap Baby and whoever else might be in the vents, we have to use this equipment to heal or, like, repair, it looks like. And I think he makes noise if we fuck up, it looks like, because there's a noise meter. So either something we're using is making noise, or he is making noise and we have to quiet him. And this is a gr uh, not this is a great shot. Seeing, I love when you are kind of stuck with the animatronics in like this situation where you can't do anything. And then it looks like we have to make a paper plate pal pal in time before stuff kills us. Now accepting applications. It's weird we've had... This is... It's great to finally have an official Scrap Baby model that we'll be able to look at. By the way, that is that is so needed lately because I know it's going to have little errors and discrepancies because every Steel Wolf model does. Uh, but it's just nice that we will have one to look at after having only like a few official renders of her this entire time. I swear someone mentioned Scrap Trap. Uh, so let me, um, let me figure out how, okay. Let me look this up. It's gonna be a black screen for a second while I look it up. Uh, cause this is my personal browser. I don't wanna give away like personal information like, oh, your order status to this address is updated or like while I'm looking for them, or something like that. I don't want a notification like that. Steel Wolf Studios. Um, I want to check their website. There's nothing on their website about this. Um, and this is Steel Wool Studios' official thingamabob. Okay, I can, I can, I can bring back the light to the world. I just have no clue. I swear I saw someone mention Scrap Trap. And I'm like, where? Wait, can you... Hold on, this might confirm one. Yeah, that is a cardboard cutout of Chica, it looks like. That is like, what... Maybe? Yeah. Maybe it looks more real uh, in-game. Yeah, I think people are crazy on that one. Uh, it's just my initial... I don't have many other notes for this one, because, like, I've played a little bit of it. Um... Uh, Okay. Okay, yeah. It, I, I just misread what people were talking about. That was a separate, like, in general, like, why does Scrap Trap look different from Spring Trap? And I thought they were talking about the trailer, because, I mean, Scrap Baby's in this, and that that was, like, trailer stuff, whatever. It was, like, it was near the, the trailer discussion questions. Uh. Oh, what do I think this means? There is a lot, a, a pretty big emphasis... Uh, on, uh, where's Help Wanted's actual trailer? Yeah. 
Yeah, there's nothing... I, I wanted to double-check that. I want to double-check. Well, no, maybe I'm going to double-check another because I was lost. Yeah, they didn't... Hmm. This is something very different from Help Wanted 1. Specifically, that none of the Help Wanted 1 trailers have made an emphasis on Welcome back to another night at your exciting new career at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. Or that kind of, like, tone of, like, you're, like, you're actually an employee, like, you're actually working here, that you're actually doing the job. Uh, FNAF... The first teaser of Help Wanted 2 had that, like... We know it's, like, difficult to have a new job, blah, 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 whatever phone guy, hand unit, was talking about. But, um, yeah, the first one was, like... Welcome back for another no. week of career fulfillment and minimal social interaction. We know how challenging it can be to find a place where you feel that you truly belong and to find a job that treats you mostly with respect and only infrequently with contempt. For that reason, we are excited to inform you that you did an adequate enough job the first time around to have you back. Also, there were no other applicants. Yeah, so we have this running idea of employment already. And we have that here, too. We have this consistent notion that we are an employee. That we are working at this place. That we are doing this. And there's a lot of repair stuff we're doing. Like, I mean, think about it. Fix the breaker room. Clean up Roxy. Uh, like, make, uh, like, add a foundation to her to fix her up and, like, cover the cracks. Repair Freddy and install, like, his eyes or whatever's going on there. Fix the circuit boards on the carousel. Uh, like, c clear and set up the breaker room. Uh, cure, like, fix Helpy or whatever was going on there. Uh, and also, the log rides here, it looks like. Or at least the, the props and ideas from the log ride are there. And uh, I think it's there's some dialogue about Cassie's dad saying like or, uh, or Cassie being going on the rog ride like early or interacting with the log ride uh which is because her dad's a technician and we have someone who's coming back for another night we have a lot of technician jobs so I think what this is implying is I think this is probably before security breach because we still have Freddy with his head on and it's normal Freddy uh, so what I think is happening is oh, this is like kind of our experience as Cassie's dad, I want to say, because he's because we've made this emphasis on engineers. We have made this whole like focus on that. Actually, let me have this B-roll going muted while I talk. So there's like visuals. We have like this whole emphasis on like these repair jobs we're doing for most of them. And I think the idea is he's just taking a break to have fun for the other things. Um, that is assuming this is diegetic and not an in-universe game. Like, uh, that might change things. This might be a VR game. 
uh, in universe, just like the first help wanted. Uh, that is an easy way to explain it, and I would not be surprised if that's what we're doing. But I could also see this as we are an actual technician uh, actually working on repairing the animatronics and getting them cleaned up. Uh, actually working on, like, oh, getting the paper plate set up for being around the pizzeria, fixing Helpy, fix the carousel. Uh, like... I don't know what we're doing here. This could be that we've gone too far in and we found... That could be an interesting way. I kind of talked about this uh, in my my video about Cassie's dad and my Cassie dad theory. The idea of Help Wanted 2 being the descent as we go further and further through the layers of Freddy's. Like, let's say Cassie's dad is... Uh, like the player, let's say that. And then at the start, we're working at the new Mega Pro Mega Freddy Fazbear's Pizza Plex. And then we're going from attraction to attraction down, like fixing things. And then eventually we get a job to get like really low. And then we stumble upon the sister location area underneath the Pizza Plex. Let's say that happens. Like, because we kind of saw it at the end of the ruin with the, the scooper in quotes. So I like, what if we go there and then. Uh, like, our final task is, like, to deal with the Mimic, or we go to Fred Bears because f if we have Sister Location, we have Fred Bears nearby, if that is the actual Sister Location bunker. Now, note from Trailer 1, we do have this idea that, uh, ooh, I, I didn't even need to pause the visuals. We do have the idea that, uh, uh, Ballora's eye color was different. In, then it's her eyes are supposed to be like a pinkish purple kind of. Uh, I, I don't. What I'm hesitant to say for the diegetic angle where this is all actually happening is, why would Scrap Baby exist? You know, because without a fright fiction kind of angle, Scrap Baby shouldn't be a really recognized character. But maybe. I mean, I mean, yeah, she was around for, like, nearly or over 30 years, somewhere in that range, just wandering around Utah. So I guess there will be some good reports and, like, discoveries of her for her to make her way into a VR game. Uh, without going the full everything's fiction angle that I know, like, some people kind of actually want the series to go. Like, oh, it's actually uh, the first six games were all... Just or sort of seven games were all just games. Uh, without going that full angle, uh, the I, I I there's not really a way. Yeah, what I what I'm getting at is it's weird for baby to be here. The only way I can see it is that this is a recreated baby for the sake of horror experiences, like. Because we know they've they've made new circus babies since the events of FNAF 6, because there's the one in AR. And while AR's canonicity is weird and funky, it does seem to at least loosely... Uh, it does seem to at least loosely be like, oh, okay, these events did happen in some extent, even if it isn't the goofy, weird costumes we see in AR, you know? Uh, like there, there, there is some level of physical, real characters to this all. Uh, with AR, or, or it's like, or at least the idea of the rental service does seem to be real. Uh, and baby, and basically, my rule of thumb is if there's an AR email for it that genuinely talks about it, then it's got higher odds of being real. Because uh, those do seem to have actual, like, lore and, like, con connections to Security Breach. Uh, so, uh, that could work that way. Where it's like, oh, someone took a scrap baby model, or a, a normal circus baby model, and destroyed it to get it to look like the legendary one that roamed around Utah. 
Uh, or they just wanted to make the horror attraction based on the legendary Scrap Baby of Utah. Um, and that animatronic is just, like, stuck down there because they don't have use for it yet. Or, like, it's a prototype or something like that. Like, there's a lot of angles you could have for it being real. It's just a weird one to accept, even if it is an in-universe VR game. Like, if even with that explanation, it's like... Okay, so there's a scrap baby going around that they put into this game. Uh, or And or the worst implication. Uh, the worst implication that it is actually Scrap Baby who has just been down here. I guess. Uh, oh boy, would that kill Eleanor's Scrap Baby theories, potentially. Uh... Uh, with a question mark, maybe? Actually, I don't think that would stop people now that I think about it more. Not that I think it shouldn't be a reason. It's one of those, like, sometimes you would think uh, something would be a counter-argument or, like, the, the deal-breaker for a theory. And then sometimes people just go with it and they're like, no, 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 this would make sense. I found a way to justify it. It's like, oh, oh what? How, how? That shouldn't... Okay. And this goes, like, every which way for a theory. Uh, like, there are so many theories that could apply that you could apply this to. Um, I've always wanted to make a video about, like, the subjectivity about theorizing with this kind of stuff, where it's like... For example, do you think that when they... For example, in uh, the Stitch Wraith epilogues, they... It's mentioned that the fire was so long ago that it was considered ancient history within uh, the police department Larson works at. Does that mean... Okay, now traditionally, your surface takeaway from this should just be, wow, that fire must have happened like a few years ago at earliest. However, some people argue it's just an old case. But like... Cases can run a long time. So for it to be ancient history by, like, police case standards, you could easily argue means, well, since police cases can run a long time, that means it's ancient. It's like, oh, wow, decades old. You could make arguments like that. Or you could go arguments like it's only about a few years old because some a lot of cases are dropped after only a few years, uh, depending on what interest people have in it. Uh... It's complicated, you know? And is so to some people, that's all you need to hear to be like, oh, Stitch Wraith can't be in the game continuity because his story requires physically impossible events to happen. Uh, for it to be... For, uh, if you combine it like... That. It's stuff like, oh, Storyteller must have the Pizza Plex be early... Not early in the timeline, but, like, earlier in the timeline than, like, the 2050s, you know? It would have to be in, like, the late 2020s. Uh, and that's not... And a lot of people's timelines have, it like, only a year or two. It would have it start construction. And yet, the Pizza Box is underground in that time, which is weird. Uh... And also, it's not underground in the Stitch Race Thingers, in which it's ancient history, so it's like, what the fuck? Did they bring it back up to the surface? Like, and, or, the logical thing would be, this would be before the events of Security Breach. But then it's like, how could it be ancient history before Security Breach, if Security Breach was like the 2020s? And you can see this whole rabbit hole of, like, some people, to that, that's all they need to hear, that, that it can't happen. Uh... And to other people, there will always be a justification to work around it. Uh, and this is what's screwy about FNAF theorizing, because on one hand, there has to be a level of like discussion and subjectivity to discussion. Because if it was just as easy as, this means this, we all agree that, it wouldn't be something worth discussing often. However, I do think, especially with... Tales games, we have reached a like singularity point where new information is so damn subjective because the fundamental rules you're approaching the characters with changes depending on which continuity and version you interpret. 
Uh, and it's real. It's really funky how the various c corners of the community accept things and don't accept things. Like when I like there was uh, people recommended to me and I did watch it. The Oof Troop dissection of Burn Trap. And it was, it kind of caught me off guard with how much that video just considered Tales games just straight up canon and never elaborated on that. Uh, and, uh, and there's other channels that have done this, but they, they make up more of a show. Out of, I don't know. I guess more of a show out would be the word. Like they, they, they do acknowledge that they are focusing on that and like bringing attention to that content. Uh, but then you have a lot of the big channels don't have Tales games as canon. It's like, and it doesn't feel like FNAF has ever tried to acknowledge this directly head on since uh, the the newer stories have come out. I would say since the frights in general. And I know people have like argued, no, this is a reference to that. Clearly, it's like, yes, you can w find a way to fit it in. But does that mean you're supposed to? Or is this just a justification or a way to get it to work? It's, it's all complicated. It's all screwy. And I... I don't know if this game is going to really... Okay. There is one way I could see this debunking Tales games without stopping the story. Be like, hey, this is not books, or this is books. Which would be, if we encounter the mimic, if this is clearly labeled as a prequel, or this the story makes it clear it's a prequel, and we encounter the mimic and are the ones to steal it. Uh, that might be able to make Tales games more or less believable depending on if that how that encounter would work. If this is a physical series of events. Uh, because let's say we see the Mimic in a pink and green Jesser costume. Well, damn. That's pretty fucking hard to disagree with uh, if it was Tales games. And that was just what we're working with, right? But if it isn't, if it's just the same endo that we saw in uh, Security Breach, let's say, like they just reuse that model, maybe some slight tweaks, uh, maybe like it has a different arm than it did, does, or something like that. Uh, then we've gone, then we've gone two appearances of the mimic, including one that would be chronologically close to the events of Tales, where it doesn't look like it's Tales version or something like that, or it doesn't really line up with the continuity that one has been through. Uh, and stuff. But it's just, there's, I do think that this unintentionally could end up solving the debate. Uh, I, yeah, yeah. We'll have to see. Well, well, it's a game we'll have to see and we'll have to experience and play. Uh, I mean, no one really thought Ruin was going, or not Ruin, Help Wanted was going to be like an actual plot thing, you know, until it came out. So who knows what we're getting into with this? Um, I don't expect it to be a meaningless game, you know? Because Scott specifically said he didn't want a meaningless collect. collect Scott specifically said he didn't want a meaningless collection of mini games with Help Wanted 1. And I don't see why he would take a step back on that. And I, yeah, I don't see, I don't see this not having some lore in it. Uh, my other question is, if it is a VR game, an in-universe VR game, what are we doing in this one? You know, like, how does this expand upon the plot of the prior one for, or add to it or prequel to it or whatever we're doing with it? I, I haven't said much about that angle because I'm like, what are we doing in that context? You know? Uh, like, what is the story of our gameplay if this is a, just another VR game? Because we're not getting much in this one to work with for that angle. We just keep getting this whole, like, welcome back for another week kind of talk of, like, being an employee and serving people and all that. Uh, and I, I can't get over the fact that Rune made such an emphasis on Cassie's dad being a technician 
with the, like an affection for Bonnie. Is an affection even a word? Uh, who, who likes Bonnie? Let's just go with that. Simple dumb words. Simple small words. Uh, I I can't get over that being like what I think we're going for. I can, I can just put this on loop. Hmm. Like, what would we be adding to without just bringing Glitch Trap back? Why would he be in another VR game? Like, would they not learn from the first time? Because, like, they were aware that was a problem and seemingly tried to get rid of him or do something about it. Man, this is a weird one. This is... This looks really cool. By the way, I haven't said much about the game because it looks really cool and it was really impressive from what I played and this all looks like a lot of fun. Uh, I hope this has a PC release and also I might have to use like my laptop for this uh, to just get space for it without having to move my big desktop to uh, or my tower I should say I, to move it to like a spare room like I'm trying to figure out how I would do this one for like recording it I, I don't think I can stream this one uh, just being completely honest I don't know, I don't have the technical know-how, nor am I really interested in technically achieving this. Because I know it's not simple for streaming with chat for Help Wanted. I, maybe I'll learn it, like, eventually, but I think for the release of this game, I also, hmm, here's the other thing. I can look up between recordings and takes how to do things, but I can't not read chat, you know, if I'm doing a live stream. And I could easily chat, see chat being like, grab the Schmiggleborg block to insert it into the wall code. Oh, and by the way, Glamrock, <laughs> Glamrock Spring Bonnie's around the corner. What? What do you mean? Uh, you know, like, it would just be that. It, it would be FNAF, the FNAF community is not great at avoiding spoilers, and this is... This is even more than ruin, in my opinion. This is a this is the full blown new game. It's a game a lot of people are hyped for, and it's a game I kind of want to experience blind beyond the trailers, you know. Uh, and I've never gotten to play a view. Okay, I don't have Help Wanted One. I tried to get it working at one point, and I had to refund it, like, because I I could, just didn't fucking work. <laughs> like, I, I it did not run at the time when I got it. Uh, so I've, I do not have Help Wanted 1 currently. Uh, so this will be my first real VR experience with uh, FNAF. Like a, a dedicated one, other than just little experiences like the PAX demo. Uh, and I kind of want that to be something I could just like let myself soak in playing the game without chat kind of in the corner, you know? Uh, and also because of the weird ways YouTube does live stream stuff, it's not going to be as rewarding for the amount of time I'm probably going to be spending playing it in VR because there's going to be a lot of mini games and stuff. And it might just work better as a video format series because, like, I feel like it'd be all or nothing in a live stream format. Like, oh, I'm going to marathon the four or five hours of gameplay. Uh, or I could do, like, an episode of all of the, the animatronic repair things. An episode of uh, all of <laughs> nacho serving, I guess. Uh, all of the carousel stuff, or however the story's broken up. Um, I hope really that gets my thoughts on things. Uh, it should be, it should be enough for this video. I would say 40 minutes of me rambling. Uh, probably not as much as some people, actually. <laughs> I guarantee you, GT Live's gonna cross 45 minutes. <laughs> Oh boy. Anyway, blah.